If somebody told me when I was a kid this is what I would be doing, I, would, I wouldn't believe them. I didn't know it existed. But I think you'd find out with most artists, sometimes what they wind up making is not what they thought they'd make. And I think a lot of it is accidents, stumbling on something, and saying, wow, that looks like, you know, really cool. Let me see if I could do more of that or, or push that idea and develop it. I've always been drawn to mixed media as a style because it has texture and depth and embroidery and thread and quilting combined you know all together in a fine art medium was intriguing to me because a I didn't see a lot of it in the fine art marketplace there's plenty of textile and fiber art and there's sculpture but never really like all together and my background is essentially quilting embroidery embroidery design for 25 years so when I started to create fine art it was just a logical choice for me. This is what I did and I just adapted techniques I knew to this, this new style of combining everything together. Well, the process of my, my pieces are unique because I start out with the idea of what I want to do. I'll start by doing sketches and as, as you can see by, by the uh, video and photographs, my pieces are multi-level. So I'll quilt uh, fabric and the fabric I use is not traditional uh, fabric that quilters would use. I wanted to use exotic fabric. So I'll use, you know, Chanel wool boucle. I'll use Hermes scarves. I'll use leather um, designer fabrics. And I'll take this really high-end fabric and we'll quilt it and I'll stitch on it and I'll add embroidery to it. But I didn't want to stop there. I, to me, it was about dimension and, and really looking at fabric and thread a, a different way. I think the love piece I did, which is a big one, uh, about seven feet tall, and that consisted of the word love with you know, hundreds of little embroidered flowers. So every flower was made separately with this metallic fabric and then stitched. It would almost be like a, you know, a bed of flowers that formed the letters. And you know, the more I looked at that piece, you know, the more I liked that 3D part of it. So then I said, well, I'm always fascinated by technology. So I saw 3D printers. I was immediately intrigued by what the 3D printer could do. And you know, through experimenting, I actually started printing 3D objects and, and we'd sit there and, and kind of mess around with it uh, with the assistants and we're like, wow, that looks really cool, you know, with these butterflies or skulls added in. And as long as they don't take away from, you know, the vision, which is still really fabric and thread at its core, they just add to it and allow you to do a different medium than you could do before. What it does is, is when you do something as a trade, you know, for that many years, you, you just get good at the technique and the skill level you know, to actually produce something. You actually get really good at, I think, the logistics and the technology behind your medium. What it does now as a, as a fine artist is instead of trying to figure out how 10,000 people would buy something, I want to figure out how one person would buy it and just put all that uniqueness into each piece. But as far as a plan goes, I don't think there's any artist I've ever talked to that has a plan that says I'm going to do this, then this, and then this. I think you have to be really good at just kind of adapting and figuring out how, you know, how to make beautiful things.